first thing onto the scene in the Overwatch League in Stage 1 was the Chongdu Hunters quickly becoming one of the people's most favourite teams to watch, Matt. Yeah. We had a meta that revolved around tanks and supports, and Chongdu bucked the trend, refused to play that style. And now, of course, they're going to be here in Stage 2, showing us if they got even more up their sleeve because a lot of teams are playing the way that they kind of played already. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't really need more up their sleeve, just more of the same. And I think you start to sell out towards the end of uh, Stage 1. The Hunters, they actually were playing more than just kind of like their gimmicky stuff. Like, they were able yeah, to people, put together... People like, they cried yeah. for their one-dimensional, or at least they thought that anyway. Yeah, they were able to put together a good, like, triple tank, triple support, but I think you, what you really saw from them, what got people excited, was that they were able to play a ton of you know, damage dealers. And you see they used two DPS 46% of the time, the rest of the league was only using 25% of the time. So, you know, the Hunters were you know, making them fan favorites, right? I think now, though, they have the opportunity. Even, even though their Stage 1's not that bad, they have an opportunity to win some more games here in Stage 2. Absolutely. It did lose. Farrell was very impressive. Amon, of course, showed us fantastic Wrecking Ball play across Stage 1. But then we were surprised to see his Reinhardt in Chengdu's 3-3 yeah. composition look really good. But here's my question. What about the Winston? We haven't seen him play Winston, really, at all. I mean, it's just been either... Reinhardt or Wrecking Ball. And I think, uh, you know, he kind of said that, uh, you know, the Hunters kind of said that they didn't really play triple tank, triple support because they didn't think his Reinhardt was like up to par. No, they said and then he comes out. Comfortable with. Yeah, he comes out and he plays the Reinhardt against Vancouver. And it's very comfortable, by the way. Yeah, he was totally <laughs> fine. Uh, I also think, uh, too, you know, we talk about how good his Wrecking Ball is. Wrecking Ball does get, uh, you know, what I think many of us would say is a buff where he's able to use the shields while continuing to roll. Doesn't stop but, his momentum at all, literally. So I think, uh, you know, maybe even stronger on that hero now. And on the other side of things, the Paris Eternal, they'll be their opponents today. A team who looks different now than they did in Stage 1. So, coaching changes made. Demon goes over towards the Dallas Fuel. And now we start to see a couple more of these players come out of the woodwork. Cloudy on that main tank role. We expected to see him eventually, especially on that Winston pick. Gray also in the mix, who's played a bunch of different stuff. Danye, we've seen him on the far He's obviously known as being quite a great winner-making player. Uh, you know, Polish scene representing here uh, in the Overwatch League. So these three players give the Eternal a very different look, and they slapped Guangzhou in their match. Yeah, that I means you see Shadowburn in soon in the game together, where in Stage 1 they were kind of rotating those two players out, playing the Zarya role. Yeah. yeah, where Shadowburn comes in, plays the Brigitte. But I think Shadowburn, you, you can play a phenomenal Farah, Genji, if you were to need it. I know we've seen this hero pool like expand over the years, like we saw even some hit scan last year but towards the end. So I think, uh, you know, Paris, they're looking at a team where we thought this would be a stage where potentially they could have a little bit of a downturn because the meta is not really in their favor or they want to play like loads of tanks. You still have the tankiness in, I think, for a lot of compositions, but now they have some flexibility with players like Shadowburn that could really help them out. And you wonder, obviously, it is the meta changing that allows them to go for this sort of change. Also, Fefe now moving into that sort of yes. head or lead coaching position on the Paris Eternal, whereas in the past they sort of had multiple head coaches that all sort of filled the same roles. And I chatted with Gray a little bit uh, here and there, um, and he sort of said that he wants to change his team. He thinks he can change his team from the inside. Um, you know, if you ever speak to the guys, very experienced Overwatch player playing back way before like the, the Overwatch League era played on teams with players like Neptuno, uh, Logix, Swoosh, you know, and the European scene. So a very good brain on the guy. And definitely the way he thinks about the game is is it definitely interesting. I mean, look, uh, you know, a, a coaching team, a uh, coaching change comes through and then, you know, some changes to the roster and who's going to be starting some of these games. And you can turn or you can turn some positive momentum out of that, right? Everybody, it's a, you know, kind of like when you, when you have a new teammate, it's a little bit like a honeymoon phase, right? Where, you know, nothing's wrong when a new player comes into the lineup. Start winning a bunch. Yeah. yeah, you start winning a little bit. Everybody feels confident with the new player in the mix like oh we solved all our problems like it's it so i think you'd ride that for a little bit if you're paris well with all that aside it's time to see we've talked about these things let's see them as they take to the stage first it will be the chengdu hunters this is a team that's been pressed this man and all their players aren't even here yet but we haven't seen um young chao long yet i mean look, this is going to be you know very interesting Chi ren as well not here in uh, in America yet, but still with this arguably weakened, at least you know on paper roster, they've given us some great Overwatch now. And I mean, this is their jungle, man. Yeah. This is the style that they've been playing for quite some time. You know, we're seeing these DPS heroes weaved into the mix, so they should be very comfortable here. And I think uh, you know Jinmu could be really big for the hunters in this meta. We've seen a lot of Farah today. I think if Farah becomes a mainstay in the meta or a hero that you consistently need a top tier Farah at. He's been one of the best so far. 
Well, there's the whole roster there. I look forward to see Bacon Jack on that Widowmaker once more. That'll be yeah. a lot of fun. But it's time to bring out their opponents. Let us meet the Paris Eternal. Man, everyone will be sitting up, sitting down, sitting up. Get more of a workout than we are out here. Leading the charge, Teen Wolf, Grey. Shaved his beard a little it's bit there. He's trimmed that one. Wolf. Yeah, team oh, come on, man. You can't do your butt like that. There you go, little, little Teen Wolf looking. Uh, trimmed it down a touch. It. Yeah, so soon Shadowburn, Cloudy's there, Finzi Cruz, and Gray will be taking the stage. And again, once again, Shadowburn and, uh, and soon in the same roster to start off with. Paris Eternal, we thought they could only play triple tank, triple support style. We kind of had them hedged in that one. We thought, oh man, maybe they're not, they're not even that good at that. But all of a sudden, seeing a different look from them right now. And, and all of a sudden, you realize all these damage dealing weapons that this team's been concealing yeah. can now come to the fore. Gray also, by the way, has a really nasty Sombra. Uh, if he will be required to play that, he is able to. And uh, it's good to see Cloudy in the lineup, but uh, Ben Best is pretty good on the Reinhardt during stage one, but I think you need a, you know, a little bit more versatility out of your main tank. Uh, you know, the series we did with Boston, right? And you saw every main tank being played pretty much by Fusions. And I think when you look at Cloudy, you know, very good Winston player, play the Wrecking Ball, so. I want to see the Ana. Oh, from Grey today. Yeah, you've Please. got to catch all that water, bro. Water went down the wrong This side. is his Zenyatta uh, stage, so this is uh, his ranks in general. So importantly, defensive assists, healing done. They're very respectable numbers. It is a, a small sample size map. We haven't seen as much of Grey on the stage, but obviously against Guangzhou, he looked excellent. The, that cheeky little Batiste immortality yeah. feel on Junkertown that he kind of threw under the payload. Love to see that kind of stuff. Let's see where we're going now in your map set presented to you by Toyota. Starts on Oasis. We have Hanamura, Blizzard World, and Rialto to follow here. So again, a lot of maps with a lot of verticality, a chance for our bunker composition on Hanamura and Rialto as well. Pretty good Fara maps. And I know we talked about uh, Jinmu's Fara. Shadowburn has a really strong Fara as well. It'd be awesome to see those two players, you know, go at it in the Battle of the Sky. He talked about it in his All Access Q&A the other night that, uh, you know, he warms up by you know, playing against training bots with, at, at high speed. So makes it harder to hit those rockets. Presumably he's practicing his direct hits and stuff like that. And in that previous match, he looked very good. So Chongdu finally taking the stage. As Monty pointed out, everyone's been waiting to see what these guys will bring in this meta. And already I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yeah. I like it. Why do I need any supports? But just get Eva Tolo to go play uh, like a Hanzo or something. Let's go at it. You can't even uh, joke about these things with Chongdu because I would probably do it. They played a lot of single support last days. Yeah. All right. Is that soon on the McCree? Oh, yes. All right. So Paris come out here with um, a bit of a 2-2-2 of their own. You see Shadow Ben on the Brigitte, so he's still chained to that role, at least for now. Bacon Jack's gone on a long flank. Usually you don't see this. He's got all the way underneath, sprinted all the way through the bottom. Trying to go all the way around. Even though I'll have to use this res here early. Jinmu's down. Yeah, that, that's what happens when you're going for that res there on the Kyo. You have Jinmu get taken out in the sky. Uh, Evil Tower can only be in so many places at once. He can only oh. resurrect one person at a time. Finzi does the same thing again. He just goes up onto the high ground, charges in, gets rid of Kyo. And you have to say that's worth it giving up his mech. Two kills on the enemies in Yada. The Hunters haven't been able to get off the starting block yet. You do still have some long range damage though being put down now by Jinmu. Yeah, maybe getting a pile driver kill there on the Finzi. That's gonna get res right up though. Bacon Jack really trying to harass. He's fully flanked. He's almost begging Soon to try and challenge him. Now Soon gonna try and use a period of absence from Bacon Jack to apply more pressure to the point. Aon got stunned there pretty hard, but again, that active shield man just keeps him alive. He's surrounded by more people, he gets more shield, but great finds to finish. It's a three-man EMP though. Cloudy was hit hard by that one, but he's kept alive at least for long enough. The Eternals still control the point at 32%. The Keeper contested, and Jinmu is out of the mix. Now by a break, nonetheless. Is, <laughs> yeah, you have Jinmu getting res right up. Cruz will res up Cloudy. So Cloudy does have primal rage to potentially use here. Is you know, Paris still controls this point. Uh, it's true. Amon is very hard to kill. He always manages to get away. The problem is, is that the Hunters need a clean fight with, to capture this point back. The Eternal will just set their feet down on the point. They won't be shifted. And Chongdu, all they're doing is blowing hot air. The point does end up flipping here. They need to go back. They have to go back. Bit, but... They can't just let him retake this one easy. Oh, the immediate stun on Amon there as well. Another stun. That was two stuns used on the main tank from the Chandra Hunters. And that is finally enough to silence him. And they're now coming back into the next fight. It's like, it really, I, I, it kind of feels like that this was the first fight of the entire game. Like, the Hunters had to back up a little bit. But really, it's kind of our first fight. So uh, soon we'll have the Deadeye. It's a little bit more effective now. Maybe you see like a, a you know, Deadeye Nano boost. 
really takes the players out pretty quick. But it ramps up quicker. Yeah. Oh, Sunu Jinmu. Jinmu when he oh, comes to the side, just getting around the corner, but also goes down, headshot. Soon there, being helped out in a big way by Cruz on the Mercy. I don't think the Chondu Hunters have much left to do here. Cloudy was nano boosted, kept him alive, and now he sits on the point. Amon is hey, up in that right-hand corner there. We just hung around for a little while. Hard to say what he's really looking for right now. Just the, the touch that was required. Elsa needs to get that EMP. It needs to be good. There's Somebody a lot of ways to watch it. Yeah. Does. Touches that one. He's forced to translocate out pretty fast, though. So he might just walk up an EMP if that's what's required here. Primal Rage from Cloudy. That transcendence from Keo doesn't look great on paper, does it? The rest of the Chandu Hunters will push back off the point. Finzi just leaving a deterrent out in front of the point, but Amon finds him before he can get back in his mech. And Jimmy wants to go close quarters with this barrage here, but his quarry, Gray, had already been taken down. So now he has a bit more freedom about pushing in. He can save that ultimate for later. Gray's been brought back into the fight, but Paris Eternal had lost control of the point. They need to retake it now. Soon's gonna try for a dead eye, but Demon from behind trying to go for a barrage. It's baited out. Soon cancels his inner dead eye that turns around and gets rid of the Farah. Elsa has to take cover. Soon rattling shots off. Forced to translocate with just a sliver of health left, and Soon is not able to find a stun. The Sombra slinks away into the shadows. Amon drops down to the middle of the pit here. Paris, what a retake. They have to commit properly to this now. And it's been contested by Amon on that wrecking ball. Pile driver down, he was finally grenaded. And that's the point for Paris. Now Chongdu had to take it back or it's over. Yeah, with having that extra tank for Paris, they're able to stay on the point much longer than the Hunters. They're gonna be able to get Amon back in the fight. You're gonna have the Valkyrie being used here by Cruz though, keeping Paris all topped up. Looks like that's enough for Chongdu. The resurrect there was pretty timely from Evil Tile. And so, Chongdu would have been far further ahead, well, far further in terms of percentage if Paris had not yeah. just nabbed the point back during that overtime fight. But they, 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 they use Eamon so many times to just kind of like get onto the point, contest it, then he drops into the hole, then he has to come back around. They have nobody else that can you know, have a large HP pool to get onto the point and oh, keep it going. Oh, dangerous. Oh, I mean, you're not going to live long Look, that. You are playing Wrecking Ball into a team with two stunners. <laughs> Essentially. In fact, three if you can't gray sleep. It's very easy to stop that wrecking like ball in the trying. biotic grenade and oh. <laughs> soon rattles off the headshot just as soon as the flash connects. There was no chance for Elsa to get away there. Bank Jack will try a tactical visor. But he's uh, facing scrutiny from multiple angles and he will fall. Elsa is resurrected, but he's no closer to his EMP than he was about a minute ago in LH Cloud. He's just gonna face tank Jinmu. He gets the kill as well. Soon finishes off Evil Tal down to the dead eye. And now the Eternal, just a matter of cleaning up and being done with this one now. Kyo lingering close to the point here. He'll probably try and go and touch, but he's too slow. Can you believe that was round one, by the way? <laughs> it's a really long round. I mean, it, it kind of feels weird, like, even, like, it didn't really seem like the Hunters had, like, a, a really, like, strong fight where they take control, but they somehow build up, like, 82% during that. Like, it just, it didn't feel like that close of a game, considering how many, it was really one fight that really went in favor of the Hunters, but I really like uh, what Paris did there. They were able to run the Brigitte McCree, take advantage of the Wrecking Ball play that came out from the Hunters. Soon looking very good on DPS. To no one's surprise, I'd say. Hey, look, I mean, Tondu's team composition was very, like, individualistic, right? Like, a lot of those heroes were trying to do things on their own. Baker Jack 76, Els was trying to get EMPs, Amon was trying to set things up there with the, with the Wrecking Ball. I think that's just where the Hunters thrive, where if they can turn the game into, like, a series of, like, mini one-on-ones all over the map, get you spread out, not really make it as much teamwork-oriented, that's where they feel like they're just skill, their raw skill can come through. Soon's no stranger to that though, Matt, because that's exactly what the old Rogue team did. It's exactly how they played before the Overwatch League was even inaugurated. So it's, it's very common for French players to go for that kind of approach. LH Cloudy, nicely done. Nice little pile driver there to secure the kill, and he slinks back to where Cruz will be providing him with healing. It's gonna be Wrecking Ball versus Wrecking Ball here. Cloudy definitely has his work cut out for him. On the high ground there, Baker Jack, pretty comfortable. He was only really bothered early in the yeah. fight, I suppose, by Cloudy, and he left after he got rid of Kyo. I mean, the, the real thing that Bacon Jack has to worry about is Shadow Burn, and Elsa was able to get a kill on the Shadow Burn. I believe it was a hack as well that went down, so you have your Sombra able to take out the other team's far. That allows the 76 to just sit up on that high ground, not have to worry about just getting spammed down with rockets. Do consistent damage. 
Elsa doesn't want to reveal himself there by taking a pot shot at soon. Let's him pass by. EMP very close. So Cloudy hacked to start the fight. That's definitely frustrating for the main tank. He's able to back away, and Shadowban found Bacon Jack there in a rather negatively slanted matchup for the Farah, but he is being pocketed by Cruz. Here's that EMP though, connects a couple players, Shadowban soon and Cloudy all affected. Probably nastiest for the Wrecking Ball here, and Fizzy's gonna go for the tactical fights, but he's found Elsa. Jinmu trying to take refuge inside the small pagoda. But the Eternal have the player advantage, Matt. Now they've got to try and lean into that a little further. But they're gonna let Bacon Jack get up on the high ground here, and Bacon Jack does have the tactical visor. Oh, soon, just not enough damage with that pulse bomb. The damage was reduced anyway, but also the adaptive shield of Aemon Aim just allowed him just to shrug it off. The Hunters remain in control. The Eternal have not been able to completely clear the point of these players. I, I think Parrish just, uh, they kind of lost track of the spawn, so to speak. And you know, Bacon Jack was coming off of respawn. Paris had control of the high ground, and they started to rotate back down to the point to try and finish some of these players off. And Bacon Jack coming up the respawn immediately with his tack bites and just goes right up to the high ground, able to pick up two. We've seen this happen at teams before. Trying to play Chongdu's game, they get lost in a haze of bloodlust and they wake up with a loss message on their screen. They've got to keep it together, but Shadowburn, that was very classy. Kio and Bacon Jack both falling quick. Oh, exception! <laughs> what a connection! Threading the needle. Oh, it must be so awesome to be able to do that. <laughs> no, them training bots really paying off. 94% <laughs> to 2 and yeah, okay. Paris are in it. You too can do that if you go home and shoot training bots and <laughs> move really fast. No, no. Most likely. Yeah. Still for a couple years, that's all. Yeah. No one said how long it would take. Right, so Chongdu, what are they working with here? Well, Minefield, EMP, Transcendence. They're the, the most important ones to come up to. Grey has a nano boost here. So you can give it to Shadowburn, he can try and get a, a higher value barrage off. You give it to Cloudy and he can just not die ever. I mean, I think you can give it to Cloudy and get like that pile driver, right? That does a ton of damage onto his support. Absolutely. And the displacement is also uh, very stressing. Jimmy Loyal, oh, Cruz, go for it. Okay. He's actually going for it. <laughs> All right. Why not? Side to back out. He's in Valkyrie right now, so obviously, you know, he won't get stuck out of line of sight of any teammates there. Sleep out on Amon as well. He was dealt with very easily by the back line of the Eternal. Gray is traded for it, though. So that. A huge deal. The EMP was already used by Grey. Cloudy, though, hacked up. You can see that at the top of your screen, but Finzi is hunting. Baker Jack, though, gets that health pack, and at least the Eternal took control of the point, Matt, so they can just, you know, dip in and out of this point when they want to, but soon as there is caught, he goes to the EMP. Why? Who's there to follow it up? Tactical visor from Finzi. That's a huge gamble, and the Chondu Hunters have just taken the point back anyway. He gets Jinmu. He's forced to back out. I mean, Paris is in a point, though, where the, the, the Hunters have so much percentage that they have to use some of these ultimates because you're not really going to get another set fight. So uh, the Rocket Barrage comes in there at the end from Jinmu. Seals it for the Hunters. Better to use an EMP 1v5 than save it for the next round. And the Chengdu Hunters uh, look much better there when we, went, when we went over to city center. Very adept uh, on an individual level there as well. Just getting their own thing done. It's quite interesting, really. They're all able to sort of achieve their own aims across the map, but still generally look fairly cohesive as they move yeah. from objective to objective. That can't be easy to do. You really have to be molded by that kind of uh, approach to make it work here. And, uh, for how awesome we saw Shadowburn with those, uh, you know, rocket direct hits. Obviously, I know Jinmu's played the Farah for a bit longer uh, in this map, but he's got 38 rocket direct hits as opposed to Shadowburn with the 13, so you see those direct hits with the far are able to do a ton of damage. I mean, Jin Jinmu's like 25% of his team's overall damage right now, so. Which is significant when a lot of his team was playing damage dealer roles. Keep that in mind. Uh, the, the interesting, Mercy Moira as a support combo. Uh, usually, with Mercy, you see something like a Zenyatta. You usually don't see Moira. Who's Moira healing here, really? Yeah, I don't know. Hang on, goes for the pile driver. Gray knocked up. He had no chance to respond to that one. Anyone thinks about backing out, but then goes back in. Gonna go uh, around and around, perhaps. The Eternal will at least give it enough freedom to bring Gray back into the fight. Now Bacon Jack is down, but the Hunters control the point. Amon has to just cool his jets for a moment. He was bionated. Keo just gonna fade back to the Mega Hell Pack in the middle of the map here. Or Paris try and take the point, but Amon is just gonna keep that one stalled out. Gonna maintain some sort of presence. And Shadowburn, he's flying too low to the ground. Splash damage against any of the masonry would have done the job there. <laughs> Tetherball time! He lives through it. Yep. The shield at the end, they will get out is... I know all this percentage is going to go in favor of the Hunters as this fight does not look like it's going to end anytime soon with teams investing these ults back and forth. Cruz again trying to go for the blaster play inside Valkyrie. 
Still not able to find Jimmy. You can hear him actually trying to shoot. He might have bitten off more than he could chew here in Evil Tile. Yeah. We'll punish him for his hubris. So this fight's gonna allow the hunters to get up to about, you know, 50%. So, oh, oh, really? Is, that is nuts. I can how see Gray. I can see Gray yelling at his team right now to follow up, but I don't think they can. Yeah, no. Oh, that was extreme range, Sleep Dart. That's when you just throw up in the sky. <laughs> when it hits, you're like, oh, yeah, I meant to hit him. It's like, oh, soon takes out Elsa. All right, so some somber on somber action here. Cruz able to, to get altitude once more and stay out of range. I think that was Bacon Jack harassing him down. There's an Anubis onto LH Cloudy, but where's he going with this? Evil Tile should be his target. Kyo's using Coalescence, so he has a bit of self-healing right now. <laughs> now, which support do I try and kill? Doesn't matter, they're both healing each other. Cloudy had no chance to use a Primal Rage. He was hacked at Chongdu, still control the point. 75%, a chance for Evil Tile to bring Bacon Jack into the fray. In player numbers, that's quite a huge swing. And we're at Paris. Well, really, that. They were in their death knell right now. And, and Cloudy had the nano boost and jumps on the queue and he just uses the fade of Moira. Just get away, then use the coalescence. Also being pocketed by the Mercy at that point. So no opportunity to get that Moira. One fight territory, but it might just be Cloudy that has to go there. Oh, Elsa slept when he went for the EMP. He only got gray with it there. And that's all well and good for Paris to get that kill, but they've got to go to the point. And Jinmu's trying to get in their way. Nice defense matrix used, but still gray was claimed as a casualty. In the meantime, though, Paris captured the point. Cloudy must have gone forward and back catch while the rest of Chongdu were caught with indecision. So soon and Cloudy actually get on the point and just back cap as the Hunters pushed all the way through and they thought investing some of those ultimates by the spawn was going to result in an easy point win. Can't say I expected a Farah to die to minefield, Matt, but here we are. Shadowburn obviously uh, spending some time on the ground. Maybe he was hacked and couldn't fly. Either way, he's down. Bacon Jack brought back to life. Kia was also missing. Soon is just trying to keep his feet on the point here. Paris in control and Shadowburn trying to go for a slightly sneakier route. He had Barrage, he would have dropped in if need be. Finty now in the mini diva fight versus Tracer, but it's no good. The Hunters just keep coming in here and like staggering. Like they had a 76 in there, now they're gonna use the EMP. Maybe they're able to make something out of this. Is Elsa able to take out Shadowburn? They're gonna flip the point. Now Shadowburn couldn't get there. Chongdu were more than happy just to throw themselves hand over fist into the fight. And see sort of worked out. They finally tired and wore down the Paris Eternal. Map one, Chongdu Hunters. Again, try and beat a team like this at their own game and you're going to be in for a heck of a fight. Chongju showing us some uh, interesting support combinations there with the Moira and the Mercy. Again, some personal safety for the Moira players. Some self-peel probably feels pretty good. But with that said, Chongju will take map number one and our second map is around the corner. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7 and by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. A lot of our fans have been waiting to see this team take to the stage again. A lot of faces that are now becoming familiar and very much loved. This one in particular, Matt, 
Uh, you played a prank on Josh with, did yeah. you not? Uh, yeah, I sent him a potato with the Eamon's face on it. <laughs> you sent Sideshow a potato with Eamon's face on it, but you yeah. you also obscured the address. We didn't know who it came from, right? That's, that's also true. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, all of that would be fact. Oh, dear. Yes, of course, our very own Sideshow is a big Eamon fan, as many of you are, and, and with good reason. After that first map, Chongdu looked very good. Good recovery after that first stage, and looked especially good on city center of Oasis. But it's time to move on now to Hanamura. The, the thing when he plays Wrecking Balls, uh, opposed to like, a lot of the other Wrecking Balls, only, it's just like, the, obviously Wrecking Ball has a like, decent survivability, like good, but it seems like he's always able to really gauge like how he's gonna be able to make it out or whatnot. I know the roll up time is something we don't really talk about that much, but you know, being able to you know keep that speed going, and he keeps it up like, you know, 68% of the time, which is pretty strong, so. Yeah, it's actually a, an interesting stat if you want to compare the mechanics or the approaches of, of Wrecking Ball planes. I, I feel like with Wrecking Ball, you just have to study the maps a lot. Just play him constantly over and over again on the maps, because then you can find like the spots where you can you know, grapple to, and where if you're in one position, you can get to another, and just kind of really become a nuisance. One of my favorite moments was Fisher on uh, Wrecking Ball against uh, the Gladiators yesterday on King's Row, where he uh, got booped off and frantically looked for a grapple location, and just hung there in midair under the map for a couple moments before Realizing it wasn't any good, so you know that is definitely important to plan your approach Ooh, to it. We have a, do we have like a? They're gonna to teleport to the point. I think so. Unless they, they are. Yep. Oh, they're gonna get on the point here. Oh no, just to get across the gap. Okay, I like this. So they take the high ground. I mean, Elsa has seven, six seconds before we can do this again. So why not get to the high ground and then teleport somewhere else? That's why the hunters, hunters are waiting. Hey, yeah, maybe they'll teleport to the backside of the point here. But nope, they're gonna teleport. <laughs> oh, oh, high ground. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're gonna down. All right. Next stop, point A. Why not? Oh, dear. Tony Hunter's set up. So, Jinmu in a really safe spot, to be honest, in the back corner there is Junkrat now. And if Eternal want to try and touch the point, they face his wrath already. Immortality Field had to be used there by Cruz. And you can hear the Bastion rattling away, but. Uh, the entirety of the Hunters are using the bell just to break line of sight. Elsa using very short range teleporters here to try to move his team he's up, and that's great. Oh, no, he's putting the turret through the teleporter, yep. getting over to the corner. Is, uh, see, Grey Falls. Uh, this is going to get broken by the Hunters. And really some, sick up. At it. some point, the Eternal had to come forward. John do say, we know you have a Bastion. We're just not going to give you line of sight. You can shoot the bell and make it tune as much as you like, but you're not going to shoot us. And I wonder if they stay on this. I uh, you know S Symmetra's ultimate, uh, where you can get that big wall of damage production pretty good against the Bastion. So uh, oh, they oh, do yes, switch off yes, there. Yes. The left side play. They switch off the Bastion. Oh god, they're going to be there very fast. The Eternal won't have seen this. Attack visor as well. Lord. Yeah, this could be scary. They've got to do something about this one. And real quick, Bacon Jack with the tactical visor. EMP nicely employed there. That's going to shut down a lot of the setup that the Hunters tried to wreck. They take a step back. Finzi's mech is removed though. It looks like they want to commit to this. It's possible we see a switch up there. Elsa actually goes for a very large wall across the point here. What do we get out of it? Going to be an amplification matrix as well. Cruz's immortality field has been taken down. Cloudy also falls to Elsa. Chondu just refused to play the game like anyone else, and it is. Fun to watch. Oh. Cruise down. Shadow and missing Elsa. He's charged up and ready to rumble. He's doing so much damage right now. And with the teleporter, he's going to just reposition himself. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is just tearing Paris Eternal to shreds. Fully charged, doing absolute max damage. And the Paris Eternal are dumbfounded. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. What? <laughs> The Symmetra is just wrecking. He was so charged up, Elsa. Bro, the teleporter usage was insane. Yeah, but I, I okay. So that was, uh, by the way, the third fastest attack ever on Hanamura, <laughs> and definitely the most bizarre I think I've ever seen. We talked about some of the defensive setups on this map from other teams, Matt, saying, oh, like, this is really intricate. Normally, the attackers in the past are just trying to push into it, push into it, try and break the bunker. But the Chandu Hunters go for something a little bit different. You do love to see it. And uh, <laughs> the complete uh, impassive looks on the faces of Chongdu right now as uh, they realize. We'll see uh, how the Eternal try and go to reciprocate that crazy attack. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
taken a couple seconds for Paris to find their jaws on the ground and pick them back up. Uh, that was probably the most effective use of Symmetra we've seen thus far in the Overwatch League. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that just threw their hands up and like, I don't know, have you guys oh, experienced yeah. that before? Like, is it just is it the first time? Oh. Sorry, Paris, you had to be the guinea pigs for this particular test. And it worked. Well, we caught it towards the end, but when I, you know, Elsie gets to the point, they're running the Symmetra. Like, Symmetra uh, kind of regains ammo as you're shooting the bubble. So you can see, like, you know, when, when he reloads here in a sec, and then he kind of goes on to the Winston after, and you know, then they came off the spawn, and he's just able to just keep this gun going for so long. And it does so much damage once you get charged up. How quickly people are getting melted down. And obviously, they're already winning the fight, then they throw down an immortality field, and. Paris with dead to right. So, what did the Eternal come up with here? Shadowburn, Genji, yes, I want it. Soon on the Sombra here. So they are gonna go for, not much pretense here, Matt. Just pretty straight dive, yeah. but Baker Jack. Uh... So, no, uh, no Bunker Comp, no Bastion, no Batiste, but they're gonna be running Tor, Junkrat, Far, so really spam heavy. Uh, with the Narisa, he's uh, very difficult to move, where like, uh, he kind of pushed the point, and Fortify has a lot of healing provided. Uh, by even tell Mercy. Very, very curious. We're expecting no less at this point from Chonju. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, what are the chances they play three DPS on that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Shadowburn's Genji is quite famous. He's definitely one of the uh, original Western masters of the role. Kind of passive, though, when it comes to, like, you know, we're trying to farm tanks, build up blades. He, he holds his blade for long periods of time as well. There's always like to pull it out. Oh, he has to deflect there. He's done well though, kept the turret busy. Soon an LH Cloudy have found their kills early on. So Chandu's defense doesn't look nearly as robust. No, uh, gotta get this Torbjorn turn back once it comes off the cooldown. You get the pick on the Shadow Burn. So you are able to stabilize a little bit if you're the Hunter system. Uh, you see the Torbjorn turret is gonna go sit in the corner of the point and it acts as a crossfire. Elsa is gonna molten core available here if he can stay alive long enough to use it. And he does, he uses it defensively, trying to cover the point with it. Just to get extra damage soon, has to be very careful. He walked straight across that field and took most of his health and damage. And Elsa's been walked back into the fight. Well, they can use the res on the Torb. Like, considering how dangerous the position is for the main tank. And but don't, you think, the other here. don't you think in a pinch it's like a two for one? Torb comes back, immediately deploys a turret. But I mean, the turret's still going in the corner. I mean, he, he still had the turret active. I guess now you can redeploy it in a different spot. So uh, they try and you know, get the turret set up a little bit more forward, you see, in the corner. Well, the Chongu Hunter survived that, actually, quite well. I believe Paris losing Shadowburn before they find started really hurt them. Shadowburn, who's also very low currently. Sound barrier now for the Eternal, so they really need to get some value out of this one. Getting Kyo with that hack is huge. Kyo cannot fade either forwards or back, so we can't join the fight. And really, that Morbid does nothing. She's not within close proximity to her charges. Here comes a minefield there. That one was dropped down by Cloudy. And yeah, Kyo's Elsa walks has. straight into that one. I think Kyo's in trouble too. Bacon Jack, I would call this more passive position for a tactical visor, and he still gets a body grenade dunked on him by Gray, who was not ready to see Jinmu descend upon him. And soon as the train's located out, there's a minute and 23 seconds left on the clock, and the Eternal are a little bit stretched out a bit staggered right now and Jinmu could just end this one right here with a well-placed barrage but see Cloudy and Kore will deal with Baker Jack and he's running out of teammates Matt still them uh, just a second tick that comes through for Paris I think you're gonna have to back up though if you're the hunters is Elsa will drop so Paris finally breaks it it looks like some players going back to the spawn so we'll see a change Cloudy will play Winston here so now we see the bunker setup that comes out from the hunters so they have Elsa play the Symmetra don't know if it's just for the teleporter, maybe he actually stays on it. So uh, he'll be able to get the Bastion up on the high ground. The Hunters ultimately did have enough time to set up this particular play. So we've seen teams break this composition with the Nano Boosted Wrecking Ball, but perhaps the Nano Blade might get the job done. Shadowburn is straight in and he gets rid of Kyo's field first. Two kills for him and he got two supports. I call that worth. Elsa now just trying to be a little bit cute with the teleporter, but isn't able to get away to safety in the Paris Eternal. Bit of classic dive from this European squad, and it looks very good in their hands. A chance for Chongdu to come back and contest this one a little bit. Even Bacon Jack and Evil Tile got hacked straight away. Paris look very good when it comes to that old school style. And they will also finish the map. Where has the defense been today on Hanamura? <laughs> <laughs> Which is ironic, right? Considering that, like, the top top is very all over again. Oh dear. Now, Chongdu and Paris now both <laughs> finishing the map. We'll see how overtime unfolds after this.
this match has got a bit of everything. And if you like Chongdu, well, we got that. Yeah. If you like Paris Eternal and some classic European diet, we got that. If you like so, Torbjorn, uh, the Bastion, Symmetra, Shadow Ben Genji, we got that as well. Yeah. Just a whole lot of everything. I love these type of matches, though. <laughs> You know, you get a, you get, you get Chengdu and a, and a hexagrams, right? He's, he's going crazy. I get it. It's the only time I ever see Hex smile, to be honest. So that's true. Let, let him have it. All right. So the Eternal with well, a similar composition as what we saw before. Cloudy did start their attacking round with the Wrecking Ball. Are they gonna go? Uh, the... Okay, no. They have the Torbjorn turret at the front gate. I was wondering if they were gonna like double up on the turret. So Chengdu do go for the uh, the Bastion base defense setup yeah, here instead sorry. of slightly different one we saw before. Still Jimmy on Farah. I wonder why they don't opt for the Symmetra on D. Where do they want to go with it? I mean, you just, you're just you referring to like how good the wall is, or... I don't I mean, know if they really want to reposition much. I, I think the, the, the wall and some of the turrets that deter the dive and just kind of like put the turrets around. And those turrets there. do destroy uh, divers or people yeah. flank. Perhaps not consistent enough. Because I think you would want... Like, it, it, I think you would want Paris to play the wins in this area. So they do give the Nano Boost on to Cloudy, and they get rid of the Immortality right away. That looked really clean. Shadowbird took so much attention. Cloudy was playing quite conservatively in front of that Orisa barrier, just making sure that they got rid of that Immortality field as quickly as possible. Baker Jack, though, being resurrected, could pose an issue, but he got Bite Grenade pretty much straight away. Gray from way down range connects with that one and it forces Chongdu away. Now Shadowbird is trying to go in for the kill. Team Fed! Among and Baker Jack have been removed. He won't even get a full channel of the Molten Core, and that you do have to hate uh, to see. That looks like your Torbjorn from like when you're playing competitive at home, where everybody's dead, he just pops his ultimate and just jumps to the point and dies. Yeah. Uh, at least that's what uh, Brent's Torbjorn looks like. Is. Uh, the Hunters, uh, this is a little bit more of what they've played in the past. You still have the Mercy Moira combination here, so Big and Jack goes on a Tracer. You have Elsa, he'll play Diva in that Flex Tank role. Uh, Jinmu is going to stay on that Farah all the time. Soon heading back outside with a translocator after he does a bit of harassment. That EMP and a Dragon Blade. I shudder to think of uh, what that could do to Chongdu. Especially with Kyo can't fade away. Evil Talon can't fly away. They might just sit there and takes it. Here it is. The only two players caught by that one. Evil Talon and Jinmu were caught by the EMP, but neither of them were followed up on. And Amon just found Shadow and gave the old pile driver. Jinmu trying to play safe, and Amon, the protector, doubles back. Gets rid of soon, and the rest of Paris are already out of there. After yeah. Shadowburn died, I think they were done with it. Yeah, even so, gets the Valkyrie off just in time. Uh, the EMP came through. Is oh, oh. careful. Oh, there, right there he goes. Makes that alive. A sleep dart there, or or even a body grenade, and it's all over. So soon switches. No more Sombra. Yep. Goes to the McCree. Genji McCree in a two-two-two. Which, uh, this, what is it, 2016? I was going to say, this will help against the Tracer, but as soon as uh, the Hunter see it, they switch off the of Tracer and go Widowmaker, who has the advantage at range. Soon down to the Barrage, though. McCree, not super durable when he has uh, hundreds of rockets flying him in the face, and Shadowman would have had two there. Gray hadn't stolen the kill, but it's fine. Paris will be happy with that one either way. Elsa, de-suited. Shadowburn now just to try and clean off the kill, and Amon goes for a minefield, but there are no other Chongdu players on the point here. One tick for the Paris Eternal. It is good to see Shadowburn back in the saddle. But Amon can stall this out. He'll just live inside his own minefield. Dare Clatter to come forward. You see they're now starting to get cleared up. But Amon is sleeping on the job. Great. Managed to get him with that one. So Breaker Jack was brought back to life. Amon will hang around and harass the backline here. But Finzi got desuited. So the Eternal's starting to lose their grip on this point somewhat. It's just cloudy. He's trying to get rid of Kira. But Evil Tile is also there. Gray is dealt with on the high ground. Amon finally woke up and he exacted his revenge on the backline. Shadowburn here is, well, he's trying to charge old man, I'll be honest with you. Then yeah, Finzi wasn't able to get away from the self-destruct because Jinmu comes out of the spawn as Sombra and gets a hack off on him right away. Akio actually went for a flanking coalescence on both supports and got slept. Uh, so if you're wondering what happened to the coalescence that was used earlier, uh, didn't really get much. So we were going for a little bit more of the damage-oriented coalescence on the, the flank. See the soon switching off McCree, uh, realizing that there's no point. Jinmu switched off the Farah anyway, so Sombra definitely going to be more impactful in a team fight sense. It's good changes from Bacon Jack though, constantly. So, you know, when he sees the McCree, then he goes over to Widow. Now he sees the Sombra. Now I'll play Tracer. Man of many talents and a very deep hero pool. And characteristically, great. This is that sleep dart there, and he might be uh, having to deal with that Hammond one on one right now. Shadow Oh, he was part of Grenade oh. at the time, so the Nana Boost didn't give him any health back. Yeah, he had a bit of extra durability damage, but. With one health, he couldn't do anything. Again, that was an EMP and a Dragon Blade, used for nothing. 
Ah, I mean, there were three ults for the Eternal that literally just went straight down the drain there. Nothing going right for them in that fight. It's now it's up to Soon and Cloudy to try and keep this going for as long as they possibly can. But that is a nightmare scenario when it comes to trying to get value out of your ultimate abilities, Matt. Frustration, surely, for the Paris Eternal as once more they are foiled by the Hunters. Now that's tough. Shadowbird, when he's going to get that Nano Boost, obviously would have loved to have the, the health impact that the Nano Boost provides. But he's hit with a Biotic Grenade, so can't receive any healing. Can receive the damage and the damage reduction effects of the Nano Boost, but not all the healing that comes with it. And that's a big reason as to why it is used so often and why it's so important. That's why we also saw Ana used in our triple tank, triple support setups because of that little burst heal. But Shadowbird got none of the good stuff. and was in no position to engage. Not to mention as soon as EMP, while it may have found purchase on some of those players, there was no shadow burn there to follow up on it. Yeah, so with five minutes and 42 seconds in the time bank here for the Hunters, do they run the same thing again? What does Paris decide to do? do they think if they run the bunker that they'll be fine. Uh, it looks like at least at the start here, it looks like they'll try and do so. They feel like they can win against this composition with Attackers in the bunker combo. They do have Soon playing uh, the Sombra here. You don't have like a third support or Torbjorn or something. Uh, maybe you could have ran like an extra flanker. Uh, if you had Finzi switch on up and just play like kind of like, separate a little bit. But looks like you'll see the teleporters that will come through from Elsa. I wonder if the first teleporter comes through to the right hand side. If we see Paris rotate right away and not kind of, hey, what's happening, and then going to get caught behind. You have to be careful. Neither of these teams are fielding Lucio here, so making those quick adjustments and positioning becomes a little bit harder, or at least it's easier to catch teams on the wrong foot. And uh, what better than to uh, force a response than Symmetra? I, I think what would be scary here is if that, let's say, for argument's sake, uh, they start to rotate back, so Paris still up on that high ground. If they rotate back, do the Hunters just drop straight down? So Paris is actually rotating. So it's exactly what I was talking about. They've actually rotated all the way around. So they've beaten the Hunters to the punch this time. They've already seen it once. Okay, but Chongdu get to set themselves up with like a, a pitched battle here over on point A where Paris have to step up and do something about it. So Shadow is in a decent spot, but you notice the shield in front of him keeps getting broken down and his tanks have to body block for him. And that's why Finzi gets desuited there. The immortality field getting used, but the damage had already been done. Jinmu finding soon again. Oh, the Junkrat's about to make this one really nasty. Amon moves up to the corner. He knows he goes down, but he's more than happy to trade that. Paris there, get rocked once more on A. <laughs> that is so filthy. <laughs> I, I think what, what's, what's really crazy about like Elsa and how he's played the Symmetra so far is like, you know, the, the, the speed in which like you're seeing the teleporters come out, like the decisiveness of what to do with them. So right here we have a teleporter that goes over the left-hand side, gonna go and try and Make a play for the point right away again. Again, they'll play this corner here. Use the Arisa to set up the barrier, and Elsa will do what he did before Cloud. He's got to be real careful. Finzi also down there, so Elsa getting free damage. But this is a good result, getting Elsa knocked down to the low ground. He can't really do much on the high, and that's an EMP. He catches Evil Tail, Amon, and Jinmu, but Amon was standing inside an immortality field. Now it's going to be the amplification matrix used, but Gray's going to stand in the middle of that one. It's possible to cut through that damage, though, with, uh, with the, through the healing with that damage, though. And we saw that happen. Riptire, Jinmu makes it work here. And now Finzi's is going to get desuited, and this could be it right here. Paris Eternal again, failing to come up with the answer. Chongdu just go the old rinse and repeat, but their strategy is so foreign, so strange. And Paris have no idea what to do about it. That's map two to but, Chongdu. But he just heads it off right away, backs away. Nothing you can do about that is Paris has zero answer for the Hunter's offensive attack. Chongdu again, innovating, bringing some new stuff. Paris had to figure out a response in the halftime break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. High ground or low ground, T-Mobile has you covered.
The Chengdu Hunters are putting on a show here in the Blizzard Arena. Right now, they are up 2-0 over the Paris Eternal at the half. Welcome back into the building, everybody. What a show we just saw on Hanamura. We've got Bren, we've got Sideshow, and this is, of course, the most exciting match of the day, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Without oh, a doubt. Yeah. I love it. Might Chunk be the most Dude. exciting map of the year. This was the, yeah. the, the Hanamura play was be. fantastic. We're going to get to Hanamura in just a second, but we got to start here with control, as always. It's always our game one. And this one I love because we see a lot of DPS and these two teams have some stacked DPS lineups. Let's roll some of the highlights here. Who are you guys watching first? Because when I saw Shadowburn and Soon at the same time, I got excited. <laughs> I think just the opening, I was definitely keeping my eyes on Soon because Shadowburn was on that Brigitte and he was really doing well. I mean, he completely shut down Elsa. But in the second stage, I was all about Shadowburn. Oh, he was unreal, here. dude. Look at this. Jinmu. Look at this. Oh, Waver, earlier you Waver. said Ding was the best bar in the oh. game. Do you take it back now? Oh. <laughs> I'm not listening to your pocket. I just, oh, I'm excited. Never do. To see it. Jinmu closes oh. it out with the barrage, and then you saw him in the third and final round. It was Jinmu taking over the skies. It certainly was. He actually ended up playing the, the better Farrer out of the two, <laughs> as exciting as Shadowburn was. Uh, and yeah, they end up taking that, and I think. Chengdu actually have a really good read on the meta at the moment, which shouldn't really be a surprise to anybody. They played they the were... exact same stuff last stage. So yeah, yeah, yeah that doesn't make... It, uh, and we kind of were talking about it there. backstage. If you look at Chengdu, yes, they have a three and four record. It's the first time we're seeing them in stage two, and it's a new meta. They were playing hard mode through all of stage one, and they're currently looking great. Here's a look at what happened when we went to our second map. It's Hanamura. And they're just breaking the game here. The oh, symmetric comes it. out. This is the Mr. X strat. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Yeah, Matt must have been so happy. Yeah, he does it in diamond, though. <laughs> he loves it, doesn't he? But I think Chengdu are fantastic because they're like, they are the, the, the every man's team, if you like, you know? Yeah. They're just running these diamond strategies and making it work. But it's unreal to me that they found a composition that has more shield pressure than the Bastion coming yeah. out. The, crazy. The, yeah. And uh, the Paris Eternal don't often play with a mercy damage. Look at the damage. The in, and so this Symmetra does an outrageous amount of shield pressure. Just the fact that you can lock onto shields and obviously you never miss. But look at this aim and play as well. He boops the Ana out the way so that Shadowburn cannot be Nana boosted and then just destroys. I mean, a Aemon was fantastic he was throughout so the series good. as he's well. He's the best Wrecking Ball in the game right Absolutely. now. Yeah. And he's been buffed here for the new meta. Yeah. Love to see it. Bacon Jack in the lineup as well today. Great to see him on the hit scan here. His soldier once again in action. But this has to be one of the most impressive performances we've ever seen on Hanamura, yes? Yeah, I think so, because they've come in with a crafted strategy, and often teams, even though they have like strats for Hanamura, it takes a bit to pull it off. But this, it was just like they, they barreled straight in and I they just, won instantly. I just realized this halftime segment has essentially been you just like being going crazy over plays and me being a hype man in the back, just going, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was I good. also like this. I like that awesome. as well. Rockets, damage yeah. dealers. Well, yeah. well I, th I thought Paris were going to win and I was big on Paris and I was excited to see them perform really well, but I'm not even mad. Well, go ahead, be. tweet your friends right now. Let them know there are no goats in this game. Come on back because we got game three coming up next. Give it up. We got Paris, we got Chengdu, an awesome match. And when we return, a big game three is on the way. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best.
You can't blame the Paris Eternal for uh, not quite knowing exactly how to deal with this particular Chongu Hunter's outfit, Matt. We don't really know uh, how to deal with them, and we're trying to compensate the game uh, and be impartial. So, looking like it's very, very difficult for them in the last couple maps to really formulate responses quickly after what Chongdu were doing. And you know, Brennan Sideshow was saying it's like it's like every uh, every man and woman's team like uh, oh, throwing out these crazy strats, but they're working. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Josh made a really good point. It's kind of hard to find a composition that has more shield pressure than just playing like Arisa Bastion. But when you have the Orisa plus a 76, Symmetra really good. Symmetra who shield. reloads while shooting shields. It can just constantly keep applying pressure. Junkrat as well. You're going to win that shield war. And then you have, you know, your old immortality field. And I know whether you want to use the amplification matrix, put even some more damage down. But it seemed like they were using the amp matrix for healing uh, for the hunters. But uh, Danye comes in here for shadow burns. So uh, we saw the awesome Genji, the awesome Farah. That will go away. That's right, yeah. But, uh, well, yes, no, actually, Danye uh, got a really deep pool of uh, oh. DPS heroes, uh, mostly in the hit scan role, though, to be honest. Uh, interesting fact about Paris Eternal, they've actually changed their entire sleep schedule uh, because yeah, last cool. stage they were playing all early games. So they were, like, getting up at 8 a.m., like, normal, well-adjusted human oh, beings. I haven't, horrible. I haven't encountered many of those in quite some time, but now, obviously, they're playing the, the late game, uh, sort of towards the end of the day. So they've had to actually change that routine up a reasonable amount. And if anyone out there knows about what it's like to reset your sleep, it's uh, it's a little bit weird. 8 a.m. is early. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know. I, didn't even read. I think people just made it up, and it doesn't It shows you how exist. dedicated Paris is. They're willing to get up at 8 a.m. That's right. Uh, we're going to see... You drove trucks. You can't say that. <laughs> That's true. It's starting at 2 a.m. Uh, but it looks like a... Let's see if they decide to stay on this uh, for the Hunters. Nope. They're going to switch things up, so... Uh, no Symmetra here on offense just yet. So you never know with the Hunters. Is, uh, well, you see Danye playing the Bastion here on D, so it's kind of the same thing they're running with Shadowburn at the start, but you can have Danye in here. No tickle on the point there. That was Elsa flanked oh. by Amon. Where well, the Bastion is kinking any view off the point, so how are you going to get back here if you're Paris? Well, they managed to get at least the, uh, the Diva back there, but look, Finzi wasn't there to protect Grey. So the back line didn't really have, uh, you know, it's Stewart. But you can kill this Bastion and put down tons of damage on the rotation. It's Oh, you, you can. You can get behind the shield. That didn't quite work out. Now, Amplification Matrix goes down, but Danya is missing. He tried to relocate, moved out of sentry formation, and they got taken down. And I don't think an unsuited Diva is going to do too much here. So Chengdu, always looking good on attack, Matt. We can never say that they uh, don't look good on this side of the map. Yeah, so when you're set up there with the Bastion up on the high ground, it's pretty difficult to get any view of the point. But you can have, you know, a Wrecking Ball and a Sombra go all the way around. It's really difficult to keep your D.Va down there to consistently you know, keep pressure contesting the point. And eventually it just falls apart for the Eternal. Banky Jack had a real opening there with that knockout from the pile driver, but he just waits a little bit. He's unable to stick it as a result. He was too fast. <laughs> he, he, like, was trying to get the pulse pop when they were coming back down towards the ground, but he actually... Tossed it out there. I suppose he was hoping they just fell yeah. into it, but they you regain control pretty quickly after hitting the ground after that knock up. So again, Amon goes a little bit deep, gets picked off. Last time it was fine though, they just traded him for kills on Bastion and we're all good. Double sniper here in a 2 2 2. Done ends well. Okay, make it single sniper and one that's chilling and spawned for the time being. So normally, Jinmu would be a very endangered species here, but he stays out of sight until his team sort of deals with half of that double sniper contingent and then shows himself once more. Nah, Jinmu doesn't care if there's snipers on the other side. He's going to play far regardless. Should have learned that by now. Uh, Elsa, just going to uh, hang out here in the cul-de-sac and look for the weakest part of the Eternal just to EMP. Yeah, they, they held on to all their ults through this, the Hunters. Uh, that'll be a Valkyrie used there by Paris, but the EMP comes out right away. Now, Cloudy also dropped down and then got hacked, Matt, so we can't just relocate to the high ground to try and rejoin his team for the fight. The timing really wasn't there for him. Baker Jack with the rewind. Dynage is completely isolated from the rest of his team. Being killed well, and I've got to say, Finzi, excellent defense matrix thrown out there. Bacon Jack, another pulse bomb goes by the wayside. He's not able to connect it. Now Kyo's forced into the transcendence, but the timing seems to be decent. Right now, Amon is sleeping. He got hit with a sleep dart by Grey before he went down, and that gave the Eternal a little bit of breathing room, but now it's just Finzi left. Jinmu having switched over towards the Genji now. It's too much pressure to handle. And the Eternal buckle. Uh I love this, though, from the Hunters. Like, you commit to just playing all these damage dealers, and then the Wrecking Balls, the main tank, it, it, it forces the other team to play, like, a brawly style of play where they have to match the amount of damage 
like any type of coordination, uh, you know, I mean, you can play that coordinated setup, but they're just gonna keep darting around, picking you off one by one. Eamon now will play Arisa in a solo tank setup with the double sniper here as uh, Bacon Jack takes Gray's head off. Uh, this is not a good spot for the Widowmaker as uh, he will fall rather quickly, but... Wouldn't it be bad if Finzi hadn't actually managed yeah. to flank around and, and put him in an average spot, so... That's the trade, Bacon Jack. It is probably a little bit tough to play Widowmaker in his close quarters. I mean, I wouldn't mind if you played Junkrat, you can do that. Or just the Zarya, that's this, fine. This is where I think the Hunters, where after they build on the last stage, oh, perfect, I was gonna say, where they can fall back on that Reinhardt 3-3. Three, three. They're gonna play, you know, the, the Reinhardt goes with the Sombra in it because they have the Impede. But this is like the evolution of the Hunters, right? Now they can bring out like a little bit more of a traditional comp and make it work. Yeah, big EMP. It didn't get any of the supports on the side of the Paris Eternal, but Cruising Grey could not keep up with the demand for healing. All their uh, durable front line just got cut down to size. Hola. That's a, a completely reasonable use of that ultimate. Chongdu don't have to spend much else. They keep the transcendence in their back pocket. A Amon gets half of his earth shatter just from a fight against an EMP'd opposition. So smiles all around from the hunters. You know, playing against so many uh, versions of the triple tank triple support probably kind of help the hunters to build their own. They use the transcendence, they actually get a hack on a Cloudy and they'll take him out. Now, Elsa gets out of trouble, but Bacon Jack still goes down to the burst damage of Finzi, self-destruct, it's a 5v5 now, and Amon got overwhelmed very quickly. Finzi really doing a lot of work for the Eternal in this fight, Matt. Everywhere at once. Now, the hunters use their own rally here towards the end. Which uh, doesn't really result in anything. It doesn't look great. No. The Eternal in that fight, Forced to use a couple of those ultimates here, and Chongdu are getting close to their first wave of sort of uh, tank heavy ultimates here. Graviton Surge comes out from the Eternal first, though, with that fighting grenade on Amon. All he can really do is charge away to his demise. Soon ops just to let him charge past and then find him. And now Paris gets to ease into a, a playstyle that is very familiar to them. But before Paris, you only have uh, sound barriers, like your sustain ultimate. I mean, you do have a nano boost, but that only provides the healing damage mitigation of one player. You have the Graviton Surge that's going to come down, and you have an EMP. So you combo these two ultimates, you're in a good spot to finish the map if you're the Hunters. Elsa wants to go for the EMP after Cruz gets a sound barrier, but Cruz, well, he gets a sound barrier anyway. Still a Graviton in reserve for Bacon Jack, though. Now he lets that one go, and LH Cloudy has already been taken down. The Eternal... Getting out played in terms of the ultimate economy there, but Cruz has been sat on the payload this entire time and he hasn't moved, so that has not advanced. However, the Chongdu Hunters will round back to deal with him and start to push the payload over the line. With almost two minutes left in their time bank on Blizzard World, you're happy with that? Yeah, they use the EMP and then they use the Earth Shatter and then Cruz comes around with the sound barrier, keeps everybody topped up, but then there's nothing to get them through the Graviton Surge. They use a Transcendence to heal everybody up to be able to put down the damage on the Grav to help complete the map with a minute and 58 for Bane. The Eternal goal the attack in just a moment. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Pond. Harrison Pond. The crews and the rest of the Paris Eternal looking uh, far more shaken than stirred right now, but he'll be on the uh, on the post show later on. So check that one out. Uh, Cruz is always a good laugh, nice. great banter, He's classic great. lad. Uh, and he'll be on the Watchpoint desk for that post show. But right now, the Eternal need to try and keep themselves in this series. That is uh, objective number one. And I think to be fair to Paris, how do you game plan for like all the stuff that the Hunters have pulled out today? Like. Uh, nobody else is playing this. Nobody else is playing this. There is, there is not a walkthrough guide on a so, Tongzu so, Hunters match. Yeah, it, it's like Where's a, them Game Shark codes, fam? Yeah, unless you like, you know, dropping down a diamond or something. <laughs> you get games like this, so it's kind of hard. It's, it, it's funny, like, uh, Josh made that, but like, you, you see this type of play, like, you know, all like different levels of Overwatch, but I think the Hunters have just like really like taken Hey, they, you know, this is what we're good at. Instead of like conforming to the meta and just playing with everybody else, is playing. This is what we're good at. So let's play this, and they're making it work. Not only making it work, it looks like it was designed to work in the first place. What is up with the die? Oh, why not? Am I getting two? <laughs> oh. What is this hold? I don't think we've ever seen the team hold here at all. So they're playing. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like who holds here with like Lucio and Moira with like double flankers at a 76? Like who plays? I mean, they had to play together, otherwise this doesn't work, I suppose. Finzi, Paul Drive, hacked Hack, as well. Yeah. You can see how Amon and Cole are working together. Now Kyo has to be careful. Amon did body blocking for Kyo while he uses that Bidic Grass to get his help up. Great. Sharp as attack. The lad finds Kyo. Not enough healing. Yeah. Chongdu didn't even collect their goodie bags after that party. They're back to spawn. They don't need to set up people. Banky Jack going. Now they're getting staggered out. So it's flashy. It's been uh, fun to watch. But Chongdu now having to play with four players. And Evil Tile just gets a direct rocket hit from Danye. And the Paris should be looking pretty good on this point, man. Anyone comes in and gets rid of Grey at least. Uh, what? 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 Get him with a soon as well. The main tank for the Chongdu Hunters now has taken a great deal of the pressure off of the rest of his team. He needs to take cover though. He doesn't have his adaptive shield for the next moment, but a hacked health pack is just as good, if not better, in a pinch. Now, Cloudy going down. Elsa's pulse pump does get eaten up, but Paris Eternal got absolutely broken. How, how many final blows did he even have here at the beginning? Like, I uh, you know he's got uh, nine. Five already in the beginning. He got those first two kills, and then he, uh, again, I uh, got a Soldier 76 kill, and then he got those two there. So five, I think. Oh, the, and that's crushing for Paris. Like, you have the advantage. You're getting spawn camp, and he always constantly finds, like, one or two eliminations. And six man EMP. EMP. Big EMP right outside the spawn. Coalescence used as well. This wow. is like San Francisco shock ass, right? Uh, it's like what we saw them do the other day on Anubis hey, for the Valiant. Right. Paris may as well pull up a chair and go for the tavern brawl at this stage. So that's where they're being trapped, side spawn. And how do you get a good EMP here if you're soon? Because they, you can sp play so spread out here look, for the hunter. Chongdu, look at it. Okay, they get two. They're gonna have to be happy with two. But Bacon Jack goes for the tactical visor here. And without a Reinhardt, Paris just need to play corners. So you can't even follow up here on the EMP. I mean, Elsa does feed another pulse bomb. Finzi there. Okay, does Amon go for a minefield? I mean, really obnoxious right now. Trying to pull himself out there. He's got quite a grenade. He's able to back away. You can see he's constantly taking damage. Great. This would be very frustrating. Paris Eternal need to win this map to stay in the series. Right now, they're not even getting outside of spawn. They're under house arrest. Danye removed by Baker Jack. The 76 now able to play from a different angle than the rest of his team. And the Eternal can't afford to pay any attention to where he's set up. It, this is ludicrous. And you try and put so much pressure onto the wrecking ball, but then you have the Sombra from one side, the Tracer on the other, the constant poke from the 76. Oh, well, Amon dropping in once more. Kalbunga put to sleep, though. And that uh -oh. shield's still on him though. Finn's not able to find anything with that self-destruct. Not really sure what he was hoping for. They're probably killed, to be honest, but he didn't get any. Kyo's able to fade back now. Sends a biotic orb in, trying to keep Amon alive. That is the name of the game for the Chandu Hunters here. Use Aemon as a very big rodent distraction. He's being chased all the way out by Danya, but he's still able to stay alive. They've still not made it through the choke. They're going to walk into this EMP. The EMP pulse bomb again, not connected with the EMP. Definitely going to help a lot. Cruz, though, once again, still able to get a sound barrier despite the EMP having been used. So he holds that one for later. And the Chondu Hunters are missing their centerpiece. Aemon right now. The Giga Chat not present to spread his influence. 
An evil tunnel now goes down. There's four players left for Chengdu. Jinmu got hit by a body grenade, and the Paris Eternal can the finally hunters. move to the point. They can finally play the game. The Hunters can come back and fight this, so you go and have the. Oh, there's going to be the minefield. You have the tactical visor as well, but Shut down. the kill's coming in favor of Paris. Amon will stall this one out a little bit longer. Finzi needs to clear the mines before advancing. Amon more than happy to trace through them. Keo can't fade away. Elsa trying to find Dane or someone there. And there's the pile drive from Amon and his demise. Oh, Paris. I mean, yeah. They're on the second phase of the map, but you must brutal. know. This would be very frustrating to play against. This would make you angry. This would make you a little bit tense. This I is think not the kind of Overwatch that anyone in the league is used to playing against. But I, I think what what could also be the thing is, right, uh, you know, when, you, when you play triple tank, triple support for so long, then there's kind of like an order of operations of who you should go after. And like, it's really like a set like thing where you're used to just focusing down a target. How do you focus down a target against the competition that they're running? Does we're good. <laughs> we're, good. We're, we're solo grabbing the wrecking ball from behind. But that's probably, honestly, it's probably the best use of the grab. I mean, everybody's so spread out. Who else are you going to get? And that's the difficulty with uh, the Hunter's team composition. Three characters have abilities that specifically make them more mobile and able to get out of trouble should they require it. And I don't hate the double sniper against this setup. I guess the Winston, they just freaking need to connect. And Cloudy's able to get on towards Bacon Jack here. Dragon Strike now being fired through. Looks like it almost would have been eaten by Finzi there, but it wasn't. Cloudy probably happy to play against Double Sniper. There are a lot of vulnerable targets being given to sort of bully around. Minefield now dropped down. Amon with the knock up from the pile driver, but Keo fell. Oh, they really need this in the other in this fight. Now they're down to just the mercy and they'll stagger things out here, Matt. Uh, oh, okay. So Elsa's going to actually use the self destruct here. Is they're not even going to be able to go back and touch. Oh, yeah. Hunters way out of position. I mean, look, Hunter's not known for their defense. Uh, it's in the name, Matt. You know, they hunt. They don't build or fortify or build Hello, ramparts. I mean, uh, they just, they hunt. You don't have to be fantastic at defense if you're tremendous on offense, right? Just be good enough. But that defense was actually a little bit disappointing for the Hunters because the Eternal, honestly, are kind of even with them on time bank despite getting absolutely slapped around on point eight. Yeah, I mean, you're still in a good spot, though. You are the Hunters. Uh, they're soon you're going to have this grab rather soon. You're going to have a sound barrier to open things up. That'll be the transcendence from Keo. So you expect... Oh, maybe they can hold on to the grab now after you get that first hit. Absolutely. If they can get a fight win here and then get towards the end of the map, you have to save it. Nicely done, soon. The Hunters yeah, wanted this grab in the arm. The, the way Soon was positioned, it looked like he was trying to get grab as soon as he could. So if he had he not seen Amon go down in the uh, kill feed, he definitely would have used it. But now to save it here, he's definitely feeling even better. It's like he got a free grab. And Jinmu goes over to Batiste, so you want to get that immortality field for this grab that's going to come down. Yeah, the Hunters now going to have to dig their claws in to try and stay alive. But Amon, he got uh, discorded there, and Jinmu's immortality field didn't last very long. Earth Shatter, Bacon Jack knocked to the ground. This is Elsa and Evil Tail, and off towards the side, Kigo trying to throw some orbs in there. Self-destruct. No, Elsa couldn't even get back in the D-suit or the re-suit. Here comes Keo just trying to zoom his way in and stall things out. I don't know if Amon's going to get there in time. If he does, he'll get knocked down straight away. He got slept as well. Two forms of crowd control leveled at the enemy Reinhardt. And the Paris Eternal will get across the line. They break through. You've got to, got to respect the amount of patience it must take to walk through uh, a storm of the proverbial to get to where they are now on the map. Yeah, and I think uh, if you're Paris, Good offensive attack. You got a minute to go. We'll see how it goes in their next offense. Chengdu Hunters paved the way with a uh, very solid offense, but as, as is to be expected, the defense uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. They're still ahead in time bank though, and the Eternal, well, they have to go forward and attack first, and we know what happened last time they attempted this. And I can't imagine that Paris can find another team out there who can s scrim and play these compositions. Like, usually, like, if you scrim, you know, some, some maps you'll practice certain composition versus another, like, trying to find somebody who can, like, hey, can you mimic what the hunters do? No, nobody really comes out with any types of looks like this. So you're kind of just game planning what you think will work on the fly coming in. 
same thing again. Paris probably knew that they were walking into, so how do they adapt here? Avon gets booped uh, in midair by Cruz while he tried the pile drive, so that definitely made it less effective. Ooh, oh, he's hit a bite of grenade there. So that is going to push forward. You've got to make use of the fact that you have a player advantage, but also, well, the enemy team has no tanks. Yeah, and I think he went to go grapple onto that ledge and kind of swing himself around the staircase. Not able to do it, so. He'll get back in the fight pretty quickly, though. They're going to give it one tick. Yep, he's already back. Amon returns. Goes for a pile driver in the back line. And Cruz gets taken down by Helix Rocket. Bacon Jack in a great position here to get pretty well unmitigated damage now, especially with his only Cloudy. Of course, Finzi could eat some of the defense matrix, but Finzi's got bigger fish to fry by trying to keep his back line that's safe. Like a, that's like a that's third, third. Pulse bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Finzi eats a pulse bomb from Elsa. Still, Grey went down. Elsa just going to back away now and try to stay away from Cloud, who can't follow up. Elsa, very cheeky, dashed through the enemy Diva. Bacon Jack finds his second Helix Rocket kill of this round now. Cloudy gets bubbled. He has to go in here, try and shut down the tactical visor somehow, but Finzi gets desuited, so no defense matrix to stop this. Despite losing game on early, uh, the very uh, rapidly moving ball returns to the fray, and the hunters hold on. So we'll see. The hunters can get, uh, you know, the 64% on a point A. They would need to take the map. So it's kind of good for Paris that you did get that progress, right? As, uh, what will Paris on D? Do they go with the bunker strategy again? Uh, don't know what the hunters will run. Kind of could be anything at this point. So I think uh, Paris, that's where I think you're probably discussing right now. What do you decide to do here on defense? A minute 58 on the clock for the hunters on their attack. But do you see a bunker set up? Do you see something where you just run? Uh, so they're going to run the bunker. But instead of you know, some some of the times we've seen it where, you know, Finzi could play like a, whether it's a 76 or a Trace or something to have the double flankers. I, I personally think that with the amount of damage dealers that you're seeing from the uh, hunters, I, I think you could do well with a Tracer to just kind of go on the flank deter, force them to come back, help out their Zenyatto and Kyo switches over. I think you can give them some problems with the double uh, flanker setup with this Bastion Batiste. Which we saw on uh, Eichenwald earlier on in the day. Yeah. They don't go for it though. And yeah, like the idea is to get, you know, eyes on you, uh, on the Bastion setup and then use your flanks. But, but because you're still sucking the same problem, that if they get to the point, the hunters and Finzi has to go back, he can't go alone because you have a hack on one side, the tracer on the other. You're going to get hit. Same issue as Hanamura. Yeah, if you had the double flankers, right? The flankers could go back to the point. You can still have this bash and set up to watch the choke. I mean, what's to stop these two from capturing the point? I mean, had the Eternal miscalculated here? Soon drops back, takes a lot of damage, and now the Eternal had to give up their perch. They, they don't give up a tick, in all fairness. And now where do you set up? Like, do you set up on the, in back, the back of the point? I mean, it doesn't like, look good, right? Even setting up in the back corner doesn't afford you a whole lot, and it's just an easier diving position for the Hunters to attack. Jinmu are able to apply constant pressure. Kyo gets the high ground just below him. Amon gets the charge through, knock them out of the way. Dane's looking worse for wear right now. They do have an immortality feel, but it doesn't save Soon's life. Oh, it's his nasty. Amon drops in. Cruz's field has been taken down. Amon trying to break line of sight, but Dane is able to pick him up. Still, the whole time, Jinmu laying rockets after one after another. And Amon is brought back. Bacon Jack, maybe he'll get a pulse bomb that isn't eaten. Looking to de suit Finzi first, so I gotta respect that. Then he gets the stick, trying to get rid of the pilot demo. Doesn't really work, but EMP finds five members of the Paris Eternal now, and they will be scattered. And Cloud, he's not exactly fast on four legs. He'll try and get there, but it won't be enough. The Chodu Hunters will take map number three with their innovative style of play, and in doing so, secure themselves the series. Now it's a matter of making sure it's a clean 4-0 to set themselves up for what may be their first stage playoff appearance. That is what they're working for right now. And so far, they started off with bang. This is only their first appearance, but we'll see more from them, especially in the next map. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Well, true to form, the Paris Eternal continues to be kind of hard to judge, Matt. One map this, uh, one match this season, uh, stage, they've looked very good. This one, they've been dominated by the Chongdu Hunters. But I like, you can't, like we were talking about it so much in the last match, but you can't game plan for what the Hunter's are gonna run. Especially with how much the meta has changed, how many adjustments the heroes there have been. You had no clue what they were gonna come out and play today. And Teams are still settling on what they're gonna play. Paris are probably right. still, you know, working out the kinks in, in their approach, and Chongdu throws them a complete curveball. Where I think Paris is just running things that they've seen work in scrims against other teams, but the Hunters are not other teams. Uh, they, they play a, a really wacky play style, and it, it forces you to make decisions and kind of in, in a positions where you may not really feel comfortable playing. Like right there on Blister World, they rotate all the way to that back corner. And of but, course, look, the buffs to Wrecking Ball, as people yeah. suspected and guessed, have made Amon stronger. He looked incredible. He's fact, he looked incredible over the last few maps. I mean, 123 players knocked back just constantly. I mean, that is really outside of the spawn. Just kind of going around constantly, just using the, the speed of Wrecking Ball, just constantly putting damage down on people, knocking them back, displacing them. 20 pile driver kills, that's uh, pretty huge, pretty impressive. And just in Blizzard World. We've seen the Eternal try and play uh, a setup that revolves around standing together. They need to remain close. So every time they get knocked around, well, that causes displacement, which kind of ruins their strat. Substitution, it's Gary! Yeah, Gary comes Woo! in for Theo, so uh, this will be his first time on the Overwatch right. League stage. Pretty hype, as I uh, will get to see him play. And then, uh, I believe on the other side of the stage, you have another sub. It'll be Shadowburn coming back in for Daniel. Shadowburn returns. I mean, a uh, bit of backstory on Gary. He played on the, that, the Lucky Future squad that quite a few of these players are from. Um, sort of competing over in contenders in the Chinese region. He, he's a support player. Yeah. You know, he's known for his honor in Zenyatta. So replacing Kyo, there's probably no surprise here, but we welcome him to the stage now in his debut. Didn't get to see any of him yeah. in the stage. I mean, one. good to get him some experience, right? You're up 3-0. Never know when you want to make some changes, you know, maybe just kind of getting him more comfortable on the stage. Never know. Maybe a player that kind of becomes a mainstay in the lineup as time goes on. Now, I always find, uh, you know, the fourth map of a lot of these series interesting. You know, we see a lot of teams that sort of tend to drop the fourth map, but, you know, I think the San Francisco Shock have set a good example of treating that last map as still something that's very important. They were spawn camping on the map. They were not messing around. Yeah. That next map will be Rialto here. I, I love what the Shock do. Like, uh, you know, if, if you are not prepared, they, they just bring it to you, right? You know, it's nothing, uh, nothing BM about outside the other team's spawn. If they, if they can't get out of the spawn, tough luck for them. So <laughs> it's not, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's not, it's not their fault. Yep. So uh, we'll see how uh, both of these teams go. I know we, we see all the, the Titans. So uh, when they were kind of running through teams, they would bring in, uh, I know, subs on the final map. So uh, they would usually, I know, sub Twilight out. So I mean, we, we do see at times some teams. Some teams so get, get a little bit of a break for some players on that fourth map. Try something different as uh, it'll be the Paris Eternal on defense. Uh, they're going to run that quad tank setup that we saw earlier uh, in the day. So uh, from the Boston Uprising. So Shadowburn will be playing Roadhog here in that setup. And you'll have Gray playing the Moira. Uh, what do we see from the Hunters? Uh, be interesting to see Elsa on the Winston. <laughs> Winston, uh, no, he's going to go back to Diva. So uh, they're just going to be playing their 2 2 2. Okay, pretty reason. This is actually, this is the Chongdu Hunters version of Well Behaved in terms of team comp. So let's see how Shadowburn is able to achieve here. Obviously, they want to play far forward. That's what you really know when you see those four tanks. I, I mean, look at this though. Uh, how, how long are we into the game? Uh, a few seconds. Uh, Eamon's already up to 50% on his minefield. Yeah. Just going through, getting the damage with the swing. He's actually attached to the cart, rotating around in a circle. But look, putting down 65% so much damage. now. Again, when he runs into people, when you have the boost of speed, and you're, he's displacing people. We saw how many people he's knocked back already. And that's so hard. The Eternal are trying to play four tanks. They're trying to set up, they're trying to play close. They're trying to get the most out of Gray's healing on Moira, but they can't when they're all split apart by someone like you know, Jin Moon knocking them around with Concussive Blast and Amon just booping them. And do you stay on this if you're Paris? Uh, pretty convincing first fight win for the Hunters. They push uh, pretty far up here. Is uh, You see Gary on the cart. Just gonna get off him for a quick second, but uh, they have the rest of the Hunters that have pushed all the way up. It's Surely you have to make concessions for this Wrecking Ball. Surely you've got to think about more crowd control or being able to hack the enemy uh, Wrecking Ball. Amon didn't quite get out of uh, jail there. He went very deep into that fight. And this will slow Chongdu down a bit. But they forced him to use Coalescence to just keep some players alive and then push Jinmu back. So now you have your EMP plus your Rocket Barrage coming online here. 
That's the EMP. Six Next people. Players. Yeah, and against the tank heavy composition map, they can do absolutely nothing after getting hit by that. Roadhog can't kill, soon can't provide barriers. Cloudy can't lift his shield or charge, and Finzi can't eat a damn thing. Yeah, I mean, now we're both support holds on line here for the Hunters. They look to be in a good spot to at least take this first point as uh, the Paris Eternal stay on this composition for now. Just, but if Bacon Jack gets like a hack on the spawn coming out to like Cloudy or somebody and they lose the shield, uh, that'll be the self destruct launched in. They're going to connect with Cruz. Great combo. That was set up with the, the pile driver of aim on there just to make sure that at least someone on the side of the Eternal was going to get affected by that one. Paris hoped to have six players ready to defend this checkpoint, but at this stage now, they'll be staggering for much of the fight soon. Oh, his crab got eaten up there. Elsa more than happy to take that one away, and that was what the Eternal were really going to try and break this fight open with. Now, Matt, they have nothing. And I think the scary part about this match, at least uh, from what we've seen this far, is Shadowburn actually gets Jinmu out of the sky. Is that the, the Hunters, you knew they were able to play like in this fashion, right? Like where they're, they're able to run a lot of the damage dealers and like odd strategies. I think it's just their ability now to also play like more traditional comps, like the Reinhardt 3 3. I think that's the scary part. Because you knew you could just, like, if you force them onto a 3 3, you could probably, you know, out duel them. But now that they've shown that they're, you know, pretty confident playing that composition, it, it becomes even scarier to play up against them. It's so funny how Amon plays no differently when he's playing into a team with a Roadhog or some no, or crowd yeah. control that could really ruin his day. He knows that if he dies, he returns to the fight quicker than most based on the mobility that he has to have spawn. I mean, so it's, it's a win-win for him when he puts down damage, it displaces people, becomes a nuisance, just buys time for his damage dealers. Then aim on behind the rest of the Eternal, but they can't really spare too much concern to deal with it because they have an enemy knocking at the front door as well, and Cruz gets battered, playing on the high ground there. You see, nice little work by uh, Finzi there, just to bounce a bit of the damage off his mech back on to Jinmu, but he gets desuited in the process, Matt. Yeah, Gray uses Coalescence and actually gets hacked from behind there by Bacon Jack, so that goes away. He didn't have that Coalescence. So, you know, he was trying to land it on the Evitol, so he couldn't get the Resurrections off, but deny that ultimate. So, you have a Transcendence here for Gary. Self-Destruct again. You don't have, like, an EMP to go with it, though, is that? Aemon sees the players around the corner. He's going to drop the minefield on him. That placement's quite nasty. The Eternal have to you know, pass by that area. Minefields are essentially pretty much deactivated there. Things he self-destruct seems to have cleared most of them. Bacon Jack now forced to translocate back out. Another boop on LH Cloudy, but it wasn't able to set anything up there. I can see the idea. It didn't quite come to fruition now. As Gary stays safe back behind the rest of his team, but Evertile couldn't get away from Cloudy. The swing of the hammer catches him by the ankles. And Gray, another Coalescence. This time, he's not hacked out of it. Yeah, and Soon actually drops there to the self-destruct because he gets hacked up, not able to use one of those personal bubbles, keep himself up. But Paris stabilized. Uh, they do not give up the second point here to the Hunters just yet. So they got this whole hog Graviton Surge to work with coming up next. Bacon Jack, we'll see if he can connect with one of these EMPs. So it's a really odd spot because you can hide around some of these corners inside on the high ground. A lot of verticality. We'll see how he goes about it. Oh, hoping to hack Vinci. Would have been knocked into the water if he hadn't translocated there. Still has that EMP though, so no, no harm, no foul really. He's just trying to find the, the best place to go. Yeah, if he can catch the Zarya inside that EMP, is probably happy. Jinmu now with the barrage. It is very uh, gainful. <laughs> we'll say that much. Vinci was knocked off actually by the concussive blast, and Chongdu will get themselves to point B here. Two minutes and 45 seconds on the clock on a map like Rialto. That is very reasonable pro process we're making. And the Eternal still playing this Roadhog. They won't switch their comp. I mean, this is the evolution of the Hunter Cell, right? Where they go back to the okay. spawn, they switch to the Reinhardt 3 3. It's uh, something that you saw there uh, where, where the EMP comes through. Usually, Rocket Barrage, like you end up dying during it. But when you connect with that many people, and especially the Diva, nothing the Diva can do with Defense Matrix. So you pick up tons of kills with it. Oh, that's a shatter and a half. Elsa, Gary, Jinmu all knocked to the ground. <laughs> Charge here on towards Zoom, but he pretty much had his personal bubble up. Nicely done by Cloudy to find an opening. And they Back hold on to the grab as well. So soon will have this for the next fight. So you'll have grab and sound barrier. So if you're the hunters, you know, maybe you opt to kind of trade your transcendence if you can get the grab out from the other side. Grab plus sound barrier plus self destruct, that'd be great. You come back in the next fight with your own sound barrier, with uh, you know, Shatter Grab, you're in a really good spot if you're the Hunters. So the Hunters looking just to try and trade some ultimates here and get an advantage somehow. 
Graviton here from Sue coming out to self-destruct behind. Neither team get anything with that, but a lot of pressure being applied to Amon there. We got stunned up for a brief moment by the shield bash. Shadowburn going to run it. They're also going to use a sound barrier on the side of the Eternal. And hey, the Chongdu Hunters do want to force some ultimates, Matt. I think we can say that they achieved that. I mean, Bacon Jack not getting that much, though. You expect him to be way closer to the Graviton Surge. Uh, you know, soon uses his breath and his back up to 50%. I mean, you can... And, and the average energy is, I mean, not that much different. Uh, you know, soon sitting at, like, 36%. Bacon Jack 20. Like, so it's not, like, a, you know, a massive, like... The triple the amount of you know, average energy he's putting down. And look, Soon just getting more value. The Transcendence is going to be there for Gray. Even when that Graviton comes online. Rally now coming out. Cloudy goes for the Shatter. Mm, not much from that one. Shatterman falls to Amon, who's still well topped up. Very healthy Chongdu Hunters in this fight. Jinmu does go down, but Soon's missing. And finally, Chongdu, yeah, again, show us the 3-3 three, three style with Reinhardt is something that they definitely can operate. Yeah, I mean, they take advantage. As soon as Shadowburn dies, they know that there's no burst healing to heal Cloudy back up, no repair pack, so they're able to get aggressive and push on through. But they don't have to spend ultimates in that last yeah. fight. That's what's even more important. They have all the big ones now to finish the map here, or at least finish their attack. They've got 13 seconds left, so it has to happen now. Baker Jack will look to open up with a Graviton Surge in a couple of moments. Oh, Cloudy's shield is getting low. He dropped the shield. Shadowburn got taken down by Jimmy. He was so far in front. This is nasty now for the Eternal. They might have just let this one go. Self-destruct from both teams being thrown into the mix. Gray had to use his Transcendence to keep his team alive, and it's worked out. The Eternal able to pressure back on the Hunters who are trying to finish here. And they'll use everything they've got. Credit to Chongdu, they go all the way. Do not finish the map on attack, though. You know, the Hunters' beginning uh, was really strong. It's just that the second part of the map, they really stalled out and towards the end there. Just a, you know, a wacky combination where they get that first pick. They take Shadowburn out playing the Brigitte, but she's not able to get anything at all after that. Graviton was used. We saw Grey use the Transcendence on the side of the Eternal straight away. Self-destructs again, neither really finding too much. And after that point, Hunters didn't have a heck of a lot in reserve. As good as they were looking going into that fight, the, the Eternal staved them off by using less ultimates ultimately. What do you think Cloudy's talking about? Like how, like what do you think they're gonna run on their defense, right? Like do they, they just get set outside the spawn on Blizzard World with like a wrecking ball and the double flanker? Do you think they play something with like the Bastion on D? Like if I know anything about some of these guys, they'd be saying, yeah, check outside the door. <laughs> Cause Chongdu, there's a good chance they try and do what uh, they did to us on Blizzard World here. Because again, the principle is the same. If you defend far forward, it means that you're going to respawn in time to fight again, and maybe even once more, especially with how quick Amon is. But with an Orisa-based composition, that is going to be less likely. It's almost weird to see the Hunters play like this double sniper setup. Like the Orisa plus the double sniper, it's something that's kind of like fallen out of the meta, I mean, really, since like stage what? I mean, really, it was, I guess it was kind of good on some apps all year last year, but we haven't seen it like at all since the last season ended. Yeah, we saw like a lot of use of Orisa Roadhog combinations with the Dragon yeah. Strike, the Graviton also. Uh, then we saw it go to single support with Tracer. Uh, Paris going to run this bunker on offense, so try and maybe get the Bash and set up on the cart. Just they don't do that though because of the double sniper on the other side. I kind of get that though, you know, Chongju, if they played forward, they would have turned Paris into the defenders ultimately. A soon on Lucio. That's new. That's new. <laughs> Triple support. Okay, oh. so maybe they are trying something new, but man, with Cloudy out of the picture, they had no shields. Jimmy gets. Uh, Jimmy. His Hanzo is uh, nasty. Like, yeah. That much is known. Khaleesi, that is known. Um, but two kills with Storm Arrows looks very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like when you watch him play Hanzo and he's able to just hit these like flicks. So, you know, it, it's crazy, right? Like, I, I feel like with the Hunters, we've like seen how wacky they are, but it's kind of like, you, you don't know how to gauge like their individual skill, but the mechanical skill of these players is unreal. The Soon. shots that he hits for Hanzo is nuts. Soon's trying to be a pest. He was playing for the low ground there, but finally gets his prize. He waited for Jinmu to be caught in a bit of a compromising situation, and the Bowman just wanted to stand his ground and fight. So Paris played pretty standard here. Shadowburn Genji. I liked a bit of Genji Sombra action. The breakthrough here, and the Chongdu Hunters will just regroup on the bridge. Soon will deny that health pack in the next fight. The only thing we've seen the Hunters cannot play is Winston. 
They've not played any wins. That's probably literally the only hero in the, in the entire roster. Yeah, I mean, I, they probably played it for a little bit of time, but they've not played it that much. Bacon Jack, though, hits a shot on the Shadow Bird. Headshot so as well. He'll be out. Kind of annoying for the Eternal now because they don't really have too much to pressure the backline. I mean, uh, soon can try and do something to Bacon Jack, but for all intents and purposes, the Widow's quite safe. And look where Bacon Jack's standing. Like, he's. No, one can no one's going to bother him anymore. You don't want to dedicate somebody to go all the way back here and chase him out. And you can't if your Genji's dead, which was the issue. Oh, geez, that Infrasight would have been the end of Shadowburn there. He's forced to use it at Deflect as he comes around the corner. All right, so Dragon Strike there. Not a whole lot going on with that one. Paris Eternal are able to avoid it. They, they do have the Lucio here, so they can make those corrections. Nano boost from Grace. Round Ward's cloudy here. Amon getting pressured, forced to fortify and throw up a barrier here. So Cloudy not really finding any of the more uh, fragile targets in the back until now, but Bacon Jack doesn't really seem to be too bothered. But Amon and Jinmu are down, so a lot of damage is missing. Bacon Jack had to go ham here to try and save the fight. He did hit multiple headshots in a row against a rather tanky composition. Amon deals with Cruz though. Cloudy not necessarily getting the kill on Bacon Jack, but it's keeping him busy. Still the payload is three meters away. And with Jinmu returning to the fight as the Doomfist, what are the Eternal gonna do? He goes now back to the Hanzo because he realizes, Matt, his team have done the heavy lifting. But I love how we see that from Cloudy's POV as he's trying to put so much pressure onto Bacon Jack and he gets back. You know, a nice transcendence from Gary who was able to actually get back, heal up Bacon Jack, then get to the front and provide enough cover to get the res there on Eamon. We're <laughs> only a few seconds away from a hold here. This is the story, though. When Paris Eternal try and focus their resources in one area, it's another part of the Hunters that are able to flourish and have a huge impact. All right, they need to get some big targets here. This has to be a big Shadow Blade. Jinmu is down. Grey helping to clean that one off, and Shadow Bane using a dash reset just to get to the Mega Health Pack. They'll have to be okay with that now. The payload still hasn't reached the checkpoint yet, and the spawn for the Hunters is quite close, so stalling here for Chengdu can be quite gainful, but no, Shadowburn gets the clean up and they get the payload across now. Uh, just under three minutes for the turn. Yeah, I mean, you only got one kill with that Dragon Blade from Shadowburn, but uh, being able to push on through the shield of the Orisa is massive just to be able to get behind it as uh, now some changes that come in here for the Hunters. Uh, so <laughs> this is interesting. Usually you would see teams play this with a Winston, but they go for the Hunters, so you don't play any Winston. So you'll play Wrecking Ball instead here. We've seen this team composition played on maps like Ilios last stage. Yeah. You know, they played like the Winstonless 3-3. Uh, uh, look, Amon, is, okay, so he's more durable than Winston in a pinch. His ultimate doesn't give him durability. However, uh, he has just as much, if not more, environmental kill potential than Winston. Uh, his adaptive shield makes him literally unkillable. He's faster. I think Winston's ability, though, just put down damage on everybody with the Tesla cannon is where you see the advantage of Winston and also the bubble, right? To have the huge bubble. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In, yeah. but the, the sheer displacement from, um, you know, pile drivers like, we just suck. Amon. That was not a boot by Cruz, by the way. Amon just, uh, just got himself caught off the edge of the map. Remember, Lucio now can affect airborne characters much more with uh, with those boops, so uh, it is a little bit harder to deal with or harder to get used to for some players who are used to Lucio just sort of nudging them. So the Eternal now starting to build up ahead of Steam map. Yeah, I think the difference really is that, you know, the Winston just provides way more utility for the entire team, whereas the Wrecking Ball is really good for Eamon, and that's about it. So, see as we get into this next fight. Transcendence for the Hunters. Yes, he's back. Two support old wins here. For the Eternal, they use Sound Barrier. Eamon trying to set up a self-destruct combo there, but the, the par driver was maybe a little bit too early. Then he waltzes straight into a shield bash. Self-destruct over the top. Finzi gets nothing either. Minefield in the back line. Look at Shadowbird. Look how much damage he took there just trying to navigate that. One more orb from Gary and it would have been done, who, by the way, has rally armor. So he's very uh, durable as is Zenyatta here. Chongdu, great time to bring the Eternal to a screeching halt. A big fight win there. So uh, now the hunters. Hello. You're looking at you know about 50 seconds left. I mean, I mean, yeah, like, look, the hunters get that high fight. ground, Matt. One of the one most important here. defensive You're good. parts of the map. I mean, you'll have sound barrier and grab here for the hunters. Uh, you know, they're in a pretty good spot. In with the wrecking ball, you come down with one of those pile drivers. You're going to build up that ultimate really quick. It's going to be so easy for Amon to access the back line of Paris right now. He'll just go up on the high level, drop off the balcony, and go exactly where he wants to. Repair pack was used right there. Soon, if I'm not mistaken, either way, it's on cooldown for a little bit here. Amon, well, as he often does, gets into the he back line, he's again. over the edge, yep. He got whip shot by Shadowburn uh, off into the canal. Look, 
that can't be happening here for Chongdu. They definitely need uh, Amon to be alive. Chongdu didn't really push up with him. They were just sort of hoping that he would get the job done himself. And the rest of the Paris had very good peel for him. Graviton Surge Bassoon is holding most of the Chongdu Hunters back inside that underpass, but then they break through. Transcendence here for Gary. This is buying time, by the way, for reinforcements. Amon is already back in the fight. Gary getting pressured now on Primal Rage from Cloud. He's going to help him just continue to get those thumb screws in on the back line of Paris. Chongdu. Two meters, or just a little bit more than that, but he's a Graviton man. This could end here from Bacon Jack. He can't have this one eaten. Elsa gets desuited, but here it comes. Sound barrier has to be used by Cruz for his team to stay in this fight now. Self-destruct by Finzi. No one taken down by that one. But Paris managed to hang around throughout that. And now Amon's going to try and stall things out on the payload, just as he did before. I mean, you still have all three tanks here for the Hunters. As, uh, you have a sound barrier here as well. Transcendence again for Gary, as this is going to be the second of the fight. He's had that so fast, and now Sue's going to have a Graviton Surge. Gary won't be able to heal through all of that ultimate, but Gray's gone down. There's a Yellow now missing for the Paris Eternal. Gary traded out, both sent down. Cloudy has to use a Primal Rage to stay alive here, and Jinmu just trying to whap back and forth on the point. Very low, Nothing trying to get those Inspire deal. procs, and Amon making it very dangerous now to even approach the payload, let alone move it. Finzi down to a mine. Amon dropped it, got rid of the mech now. Self-destruct over the top. Elsa oh. gets two! They needed that one so badly in a match with self-destructs. Not getting much done. Finally, the Hunt has come up with one. that yields results and a series win. 4-0. Two transcendences during the fight for Gary. Two minefields there at the end. Paris had no answer for the Hunters as the Hunters put on a show in their first match of Stage 2. You can see the Hunters maybe look less dynamic when they were forced into having to play 3-3. And when they felt like they were running out of momentum or, you know, the map geography didn't really support them playing uh, very aggressively with lots of damage dealers and the Wrecking Ball. But outside of that, Chongdu brought us some new strategy. They brought Gary back onto the stage or for the first time. Some very good results here in, I mean, a 4-0, the best you can ask for. Maybe we're entering an era of solidity and consistency for the Hunters now that they managed to produce a result like this. We'll find out, though, and for more, we're going to head down to the stage with Emily and Elsa. Thank you, guys. I'm sitting next to, standing next to Elsa for the Strong 2 Hunters. Give it up for Elsa! <laughs> that was a very impressive first win. I mean, during your first match coming back to stage two. <laughs> 呃第二个阶段第一场比赛就胜利了感觉怎么感觉如何哦感觉很开心很激动是吗那么呃你们在哈纳摩尔花春的时候呃你用了那个秩序之光我觉得你的效果特别好这是你自己自己发挥呢还
such a strategy like this, where uh, you really can like groundbreaking stuff, being able to use the sim. Yeah, it was interesting to see him play a bit more of the tracer on towards Blizzard World. He did uh, feed a lot of pulse bombs in towards Finzi here, but showing us a, a wide range of different roles. Uh, a player who I think, you know, playing the diva role last stage got kind of overlooked a little bit here. Really uh, happy with his Sombra play. I thought that was very solid. I think his Symmetra play though was really what. It, it enabled the Hunters to just get that advantage uh, early over the Paris Eternal and, and just put them in a position where they couldn't fight back from, Matt. Yeah, no, I mean, the Sombra play, uh, when they ran, like, their kind of, like, dive compositions were very strong for the Hunters. The D.Va play as well, when they ran a traditionally, you know, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And then the Symmetra, obviously, in Hanamur. Definitely, I uh, you know, that one takes the cake for the day. Well, it's been quite a day here, Philadelphia, able to uh, shake the monkey off their back, so to speak. In that first series, we saw an incredible game go all the way. Three reverse sweeps in a row for the Boston Uprising. You do indeed love to see it. Coming up next on the Watchpoint Post Show, we're going to have Cruz, the lad himself, is going to be joining our crew. And we'll be back tomorrow uh, as casting with some more Overwatch action. But for now, stay tuned. Watchpoint Post Show coming right up. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.